The core area of our research group is fish and shellfish diseases. We're interested in pathogens, host pathogen interactions, and how diseases can be mitigated. In order to conduct experiments with often very serious and notifiable diseases, we have to have access to high containment experimental facilities. The majority of our research relates to aquaculture, and since rainbow trout is the primary fish produced in Denmark, uh, most of our infection experiments are with this species. So, in order to feed our experiments with completely pathogen-free fish, so-called SPF fish, we have our own ultra-clean production unit where we only take in trout eggs that are carefully disinfected upon arrival. So the room essentially functions as a small rest farm, you could say, uh, with all the water from the tanks being recirculated in its own unit. And so we take very careful measures not to introduce pathogens into this unit. Sometimes we work with other species. Uh, this could be lumpfish, uh, Atlantic salmon, European sea bass. Um, in that case, we often take in larvae or juveniles. And so we can't disinfect them, but instead take the fish into our quarantine room. The quarantine room, as well as our experimental rooms, are purely flow-through with uh, all tanks being separated. In the basement, we have two uh, large tanks uh, with water that feeds the system, and we can change the parameters of, of this water as we like. In the tanks, we have uh, water level, oxygen, and temperature sensors, and on some tanks also pH sensors. And these uh, store data continuously, and if levels are of the range that we uh, decide, we can get an alarm to take countermeasures. From outside the rooms, we have panels where we can control the light-dark regime. We have the option, uh, if working with uh, serious pathogens, to lead the water through uh, rigorous disinfection before we discard the water into the sewer. Once we enter the infection area, we cannot go back into the quarantine or SPF rooms. So we wear lab coats here and also boots uh, and after we end the work in the facilities, we put the lab coat in a heating cabinet overnight to uh, kill any pathogens. Uh, we have basically two types of tanks that we use for experiments. We have small 8-liter bowls and we have larger 180-liter tanks. The small bowls are suitable for fish typically in the 1 to 10 gram range. One example of an experiment where we've used these small tanks is infection with nodavirus, which is a very serious pathogen for warm water marine fish species. For example, this European sea bass here. And uh, the virus affects the brain, which causes a loss of balance in the fish, which can be seen in this fish here. The larger 180 liter tanks are usually used for fish in the range of 10 to 200 grams, but sometimes a little larger. Uh, we've used them a lot for uh, experiments with red mark syndrome, which is a bacterial disease that results in these large red lesions. Uh, and it's mainly large rainbow trout that are affected. Uh, these tanks are very nice for visual inspection of, of development of these lesions. We mainly work with bacterial and viral diseases, but uh, sometimes also with parasites. For example, this ciliate that you can see leaving this dead fish here. Uh, in rare cases, we even uh, have double experiments, uh, double infection trials. Uh, for example, with this ciliate you saw before and red mark syndrome, which is the case for this fish here. All fish are maintained by a staff of trained uh, animal caretakers. We have four infection rooms. One which is approved for work with GMO. This room contains 48 small 8-liter tanks. A second room, which is being refurbished at the moment, uh, contains a combination of small and large tanks. 24 small, 6 large. And the large, last two rooms uh, only contain uh, the larger 180-liter tanks, as well as even larger tanks. There's 16 180-liter tanks in one of the rooms, as well as four 1-cubic-meter tanks. And in a smaller room, we have six 180 liter tanks and two 600 liter tanks. We also have a small lab where we uh, can uh, sample fish from the experiments. And usually we don't really process the fish further here, but take them up to the lab on the second floor. The lab area is used for research and handling samples. We are both national reference lab for fish, crustacean and mollusk diseases, and European reference lab for fish and crustacean diseases. Plus, we function as a commercial lab as well. So we receive samples from our research facilities, veterinarians in the field, the comp Danish competent authorities and other national reference laboratories in Europe for virological, bacteriological and parasitological and immunological examinations. We work with listed diseases and other pathogens dangerous for fish and shellfish 
So our labs are classified as biosecurity level 2 and we have entry and exit rules and quarantine after stay in some rooms. We work with cell cultures for virological examinations and we do have the largest collection of fish cell lines in Europe. A lot of our diagnostic and research is based on molecular methods and we have separate rooms to the different processes to avoid contamination. Therefore, the rooms are labelled according to their cleanliness in relation to PCR products. And the workflow is going from clean rooms with minimal risk of contamination with PCR products through rooms with increasing grades of dirtiness uh, with a higher risk of contamination. And you're not allowed to go back to a clean room when you have been into a dirty room. We work with both automated purification and pur purification by hand if necessary. Although we have defaced the use of harmful reagents, we have the infrastructure to work with all kinds of reagents if necessary. Furthermore, we have the possibility to work with GMO and access to specialized equipment like Biomark and Maldi-Tough. <laughs>